I am Guyo Wario. I'm the journalist who interviewed Hachalo Hundesa for the last time. On June 22nd, two big personalities from Ethiopia's Oromo community sat down for an interview. I think Hachalo Hundesa's interview with Oromia Media Network showed his true feelings to the nation. As the presenter of Oromia Media Network's flagship interview program, Guyo Wario is known for asking tough questions of important figures. But his interview with Hachala Hundessa set new records for the channel. Tens of thousands tuned into the live stream alone. The following week, Hachalu was murdered. So who was he? And why was he killed? Hachalu was an artist beyond his artistic or musical career. He was also an activist, uh, an icon of the Oromo struggle. So his works actually convey uh, the political narrative of the Oromo people. He was vocal against the old system of Ethiopia. He inspired a lot of uh, young people to join the Oromo protest. Hachalu's songs provided the soundtrack to the ethnically driven protests that swept Ethiopia in 2015. Three years later, Abiy Ahmed became the first Oromo to be appointed prime minister. Abiy was making major changes, and quickly, ending a border war with Eritrea that had dragged on for 20 years. To mark that moment, the Prime Minister invited Hachalu to perform at a concert held in honour of the Eritrean president, a public platform that the singer used to highlight the Oromo struggle. Fast forward to June 2020 and an appearance on another public platform, Hachalu's interview with Oromia Media Network. OMN. It was one of the most anticipated interviews. He left nobody untouched. He was vocally critical of the government. He was vocally critical of the prime minister's priorities. He was vocally critical of the Oromo political elites. He was vocally critical of the civil war which involves uh, the Oromo Liberation Army and the government. The other controversy in regards to his interview was uh, the one where he mentioned about past emperors and especially specifically Emperor Minilik, where he said that he's not a great leader. <laughs> It is a common narrative amongst the Oromo scholars who claim that the Oromo people were subjugated to uh, much uh, grief and uh, lots of abuses during the, the Minilik era. So he touched upon almost every aspect of, of things that you could critically look. But there was nothing controversial about that interview if Hajalu was not assassinated. Just one day after Hachalu's interview went out, calls for his death spread on social media. A week later, he was gunned down in Addis Ababa. In the unrest that followed, hundreds were killed and more than 9,000 people, including journalists, politicians and activists, were arrested. Security measures Ethiopians might have mistaken for things of the past. When Abiy Ahmed took office in 2018, the headlines coming out of the country signalled a significant departure. Repressive laws overturned, journalists and activists released from jail, political reunification in the region, landing Abbey a Nobel Peace Prize. Those days are gone, and the reaction to Hachalu's death and the hunt to find his killer are directly tied to the volatile political situation in the country 
constant tension between its largest ethnic groups, Oromos, Amharas, and Tigrayans. After Hachalu's murder, politicians, activists, and the network itself all went back to that interview on OMN to look for clues as to who may have killed him. Following his assassination, government officials accused OMN being behind the assassination of the artist. They said, actually, OMN omitted certain section of that interview to hide that Hachalu was receiving threats. It's kind of government orchestrated kind of, uh, you know, uh, media uh, propaganda. There is always two sides to a story. Uh, there is the government's narrative and uh, there is OMN's narrative. Everybody's saying that I was right, the other party was wrong. It is up to an independent investigation to determine whether the OMN people are right or whether the government is right. Before an independent investigation could make that call, OMN was shut down. The main reason, according to the authorities, OMN's live broadcast of Hachalu's funeral. They also confiscated the Hachalu interview, sticking to their line that OMN had deliberately omitted a section which may have further incriminated the two suspects the government already had in custody. The administration also chose to air its own versions of the interview, in which it was a more selective editor than OMN was. They aired it on two channels, and both versions included the angle the government wanted to get across. Then the authorities arrested the interviewer, Guyo Wario. My last work for OMN is two days before Achalu's killing. I never returned back to Oromia Media Network Station. I never worked for OMN after the death of this man. I was mourning the death of my friend. Still, they arrested me, saying I'm inciting violence. Where? And how? I don't have information about Oromia Media Network because I'm not the right person to talk about these issues. So who is the right person? We're trying to find somebody, anybody, who will give us an answer. We started with the Prime Minister's press secretary. She passed us on to the Attorney General's office. The Attorney General ignored us. His deputy hung up the phone. And when we finally managed to reach the spokesperson for the department, he said it was actually a matter for the Ethiopian Broadcasting Authority. The head of that organisation promised us a response via email. We're still waiting. And we are not alone. Ethiopians are waiting too. For the promise of 2018, the early days of the Abiy Ahmed era, to be fulfilled. For a legal case in which the OMN interview could prove to be Exhibit A, and for justice, after the murder of Hachala Hundessa, to be served. We have no more Oromia Media Network. After his assassination, we have no more vocal political actors. After his assassination, they are now behind bars. The political landscape has completely changed. We have returned back to that kind of authoritarian grip that we fought so hard. We don't know how we can mend some of this rupture we are experiencing politically, socially, religiously, individually. I come to help my people, I come to serve my people, but I ended up into prison. So many promises for me, nothing I'll delivered. We lost very, very bright soul like Ajalu Nelson.